So to review, up to this point we had a look at loading in sample libraries, editing and creating zones, as well as loading samples into zones and working with sample loops. In this video, we'll take our first look at tweaking the samples in order to create the sound that you are after. More specifically, we'll be looking at the program tab on the lower half of the direct wave interface. The program tab consists of nine sections that provide you a way to further shape the sound of your samples as well as making changes to how the samples are played. The first section we will look at is the play mode section. There are three options that will adjust how the samples are played from your MIDI controller keyboard. The first is poly. This mode allows you to play more than one note at a time. In most situations, if you are playing with a large full-scale library, then this is the mode you'll likely use. The mono mode is the opposite of poly mode and will allow you to only play one note at a time. The legato mode again will allow you to only play one note at a time. However, in this mode, it provides a portamento shift when you play one note to the next, a way of smoothly connecting the two notes. The master volume knob will allow you to control the volume of the instrument. The glide section is where you would tweak the legato settings if playing in legato mode. The time control adjusts the time of the slide between notes. Clicking on the fixed option will fix the legato portamento to the time set. When in auto, the portamento will follow your playing style. FX Drive A and B allow you to apply some gain to your samples. This allows you to give the samples more of a bite and add some distortion to them. Of course, try not to overdo it. Next, let's take a look at the LFO sections. Both LFO A and B consist of the same controls. However, having two LFOs allows you to further modulate an already modulated signal. This can produce some interesting effects. The first control is the rate. This controls how fast the modulation waveform is moving. Higher values create a faster moving waveform. However, in many cases you will want the speed or movement of the waveform to match the tempo of your project. To do this, enable the Tempo Sync button. Next, set the waveform speed in a number of ticks, or quarter notes. The phase parameter boosts the frequency from the LFO to produce a bump in certain places of the modulation. The attack will determine how fast the note is played till the LFO modulation actually begins. The samples such as strings or pads, having a lower attack can create a fullness in the sample that builds gradually. The waveform menu is where you select the desired waveform shape. From the program tab is where you'll make changes to the effect modules, delay, reverb, and chorus. We'll apply these effects to your samples from the zone tab, which we'll be looking at later on. The delay value sets the length of your delay send. The feedback control will determine how long the delay will play for. The high and low cut filters allow you to apply a shelving to the delayed signal. These filters are not applied to the sample's audio directly but to the audio coming from the delay module. The normal option will play the delay in the same stereo space as the sample. In other words, if the sample is mono, then the delay is also mono. In bounce mode, the delay will be bounced back and forth between the left and right speakers. Moving on to the reverb module, the room perimeter will control the size of the room. The dampen perimeter creates a softer reverb by reducing certain frequencies from the reverberated signal. All the frequencies above this setting will be attenuated. The diffusion setting will control the density of echoes being created. Typically you will want to use a lower setting here. If these are set too high then the reverb becomes muddy making it harder to distinguish the echoes. The decay perimeter will adjust how long the echoes of your reverb will be audible until they fade. Moving on to the chorus, 
The first perimeter of a course is the delay. This setting controls the delay in milliseconds before the audio is passed back into the module, which creates the course effect. The depth acts much like an LFO that modulates the delay time. This will create that sweeping effect that is often found in choruses. The rate controls the speed of the modulation that is modulating the delay time, increasing this to make the sweeping sound faster. And finally, the feedback controls how much of the delayed audio is actually sent back into the course. Higher values will produce a more prominent chorus effect. So in this video, we covered the program tab section of Direct Wave and how to apply modulation effects to enhance the sound characteristics of the sample. In the next video, we'll look at the Zone tab.